Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and craft and work on a project together. And tonight we're continuing the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month quilt along. Uh, we started the checkerboard border last night, sewing it together, and and uh, we got three more of these to make, so I'm hoping we can cruise on with those tonight. We have everything cut out. Uh, we have we have actually the small segments done already. We sewed strips together and then cross cut them to make the little segments, and we have all those ready. So all we have to do is sew them into this this part here, and then maybe we'll even get to putting them around our little pieces tonight our center area that'd be kind of fun uh, that's the real test to see how my uh sewing is going if my scant quarter inch seam allowance is uh skinny enough or wide enough who knows this is going to be the test this is kind of what i've been <laughs> dreading like my mini fear of of like these little pieces not fitting <laughs> together so we'll see that'll be either uh, late tonight or tomorrow's tomorrow's show. So, oh, you're caught up. Awesome, guys. All right. And uh, one last thing. On Monday, we are going to start the Tweet House embroidery pattern and we are going to color in our fabric with crayons before we stitch it so color tinting is what that's called and we're going to give that a go so we're doing that with this pattern here the tweet house pattern and i have links for that here under the project schedule area and uh, you also get the free winter version of the pattern as well it's got all these little snowflakes and kind of winter plants on there so that this is actually the one that I will be using to color in. I'm excited to do like color little blue halos around the snowflakes and I might put like some silver uh, embroidery floss with it. I will not already have it traced. I will not have any portion of it done whatsoever except for it printed out. I will have this printed out. I'll probably just use this one. Um, so have it, it ready to print out. And if you do have a light table, that works well to trace it. Um, we'll go over maybe a couple other ways to transfer the design, but I will be tracing it with a pencil. So you don't have to, uh, be ready for that. I am going to do that. I'm going to do the whole process with you guys, um, on, on, uh, Facebook live here. So beginning to end, we'll do the whole thing. <laughs> so no worries. And feel free to ask questions along the way for sure. Uh, I've never done the color tinting before. Uh, it's been requested a few times, so I thought, yeah, we'll give it a try. <laughs> so I'll study up this weekend and uh, see what we can do. I know a few of you have done it before, so you can help guide me along, <laughs> maybe. All right, guys, uh, but tonight let's get going with our other three checkerboard borders. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's get cracking. Uh, Diane, did you... Uh, uh, so if you guys bought the PDF, the digital download version, the winter pattern is actually the last page in the pattern. And if you bought the paper pattern, the paper version of the pattern, uh, then you should have received an email with the, with the winter pattern. PDF in and if you haven't then it's probably in your spam folder. So be sure to check there And if, if it's not there then send me an email, but that's where it should be. Oh You just watched the camper lady do it. Okay, good. So you can help me along. I'll I'm I'll uh, study up watch a few videos this weekend and stuff, too All right, so we had the little mini annoyance last night of running out of bobbin with about this much more to sew so now we have a full bobbin and we're ready to go. So let's just cruise through this one. So this is the second 11 segment uh, border. And then we have the two 12, 12 segment borders to do after this as well. So we're just chain piecing. I am just uh, doing two at a time. Uh, Diana, send me an email and I will, I will check into it, uh, when, right when we're done here tonight. But yeah, either or, whether you, you should be in both cases, whether you bought the PDF or the, 
uh, paper version, there will be an email with it in. And like I said, the PDF version, it's actually in there already. It's, it's at the bottom of the same pattern. So uh, definitely check your spam. And it might be coming from shop at penguinandfish.com. So you can do a search for that as well. If you can do a search in your email. But yeah, send me an email. We'll get it figured out for sure. Ooh, you got your charming chevrons today. Yeah, so we are starting the charming chevrons quilt by uh, Krista Watson. We're starting that um, in January. So that is the next project after we finish this top and the, the Tweet House. I'm pretty excited about that one. That one is going to be my attempt at free motion quilting. That's going to be my learning tool for free motion quilting. And in your mailbox, search for Alyssa and we'll pop up. Oh, okay, that's a great, that's a great idea too, Gretchen. Yeah, if you search any combo of Alyssa and it's A-L-Y-S-S-A, -S -S uh, Thomas and uh, P-F or Penguin and Fish, uh, some combo of all that, it should pop up. But I will still double check and make sure you make sure you get it. So if you haven't received it, don't worry, we'll get it figured for sure. All right, so I'm just clipping the first couple off of here. Actually, I'm gonna clip all of them. Leave the one that's on the machine on there. Hey, Jenna. All right. So we're just keeping on adding these to each other. Just make sure that you, you know, make sure you trade off. Make sure you don't ex accidentally go like, like that. That'd be a bummer. That'd be a seam ripper situation. Just getting those all lined up nice. All right, let's get these two together. And I think we need to put that white one on one of the sides yet. I don't think we've done that. Remember after we, after we do this whole strip, we have that one extra white square that we need to put on the end. So both ends uh, have, have the, the white square. Camper Lady is on YouTube if you search for using crayon and All right, I will, uh, I'll do a search for that as well. I have done a few, I've, I've read up on it, how to do it, and I've gotten a few uh, different remarks on different ways to do it. So we might try a few ways to do the crayon embroidery and the, uh, you know, colored pencils, and I've seen it with watercolor as well. So maybe we'll give all of them a try, we'll see. All right, there's that one. All right, and I think we'll throw that last white piece onto here. All right, there's that last square. Just trying to keep the train moving here without, without putting an ender on. That'd be ideal. All right, and uh, I'm gonna get the next grouping. So this is the this is the grouping of twelve. I am too, Julie. I've never done the crayon tinting before. I've seen it done, and I was always, you know, it's always in the back of my head to try it. But then uh, a lot of you guys really wanted to give it a go, and so I thought, you know, now's the time to do it. And I I'm totally stoked. I'm really excited for it. I think there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, to be had with with it. Alright, now I can snip off these two guys and this will be the final 11. So I need a white on one side, so we'll have that go this way, and white on the other. So we should be good right like this. Okay. 
kitty scratched that, so they're matching. Oh man. Yeah, we had about, right here, we had that much left before we ran out of uh, bobbin last night. Oh man. No fun. All right, so that is, let's, uh, actually I didn't need to snip that first one off. Let's keep going with this next, this next border. This is border, the, t the first 12 border. So this one should have 12 of these segments and then we'll add in one extra blue one on. But this will also get this number, this 11 strip off. All right, so here is our second 11 strip. So I'm gonna just throw this with the other one and we will press all of these strips at once when, we're, when they're all done. I think that'll be, that'll be the way to do it. So we are on the first 12-er here. Oh, you've used fabric paint too. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, I'd love to see photos. I think ultimately I'm gonna try and do it with uh, with crayon, just cause I'm kind of excited to use crayons. I haven't used crayons for anything in ages. And I just, I just reorganized my office or like my little studio area. And I, uh, I found like four different things at crayons. So now I have it all in one tin and I'm excited to use, use the crayons now that they're all in one place together and all the boxes are thrown away and it's this little crayon wonderland in a cookie tin. So <laughs> that ha that's been waiting for a project. All right, here's the last one. Then we will start clipping them and joining them. Larger and larger segments. I know, the Korean smell good too. So wasn't there like some study that like crayons are a more recognizable smell for, I think probably Americans, for Americans than, than coffee even? I think there was some study and it put it at like number two or something as the most recognizable smell. But man, I don't know, before coffee, I don't know about that. some goofy st statistic like that. So I think for the crayons, I mean, we might not, on the first day, we'll be tracing the design and, and maybe we'll do some tests or maybe we'll just do some practice coloring. But for the, when we actually use the iron to melt the crayon off, uh, you will need some paper towels or an extra couple pieces of paper because we want to protect the ironing board from getting wax all over it and we want to protect the iron from getting wax all over it. So um, we need protection for the like over and under our fabric. And we might need to reuse it quite a bit. So uh, have, have more than one little piece of paper towel. But again, I don't know if we'll get to that quite on the first day, but we will. And I have no idea what kind of mess that's gonna make, if any. <laughs> that'll be the that'll be the drama of uh, of this project, maybe. Oh, I think it'll be so fun. Just imagine, like, when we actually get to stitch it, it's just gonna add all those little details and. It's gonna be fun. I didn't really check the tension after I did the bobbin, but I think we're still looking. I think we're looking good still. Okay, wow, we're almost done with number 12 here. This did, did go really quickly. It's nice having it all cut in, in its little segments already. <laughs> that was the most time consuming last time. 
All right, so I believe, let's see, 12 units plus the extra square. So let me grab the extra square. We'll put on a white one. All right, here we go. Again, I'll get the next 12 pack. You know, I got my neck. This is for the next row. I'll get that out and uh, so we can keep the chain going. So the object is to leave the color and remove the wax from our print. Yes, I believe that is the, the objective, Deborah. So we color it in and then we melt the wax. And I think the pigment just kind of, you know, um, kind of, melts into or like kind of kind of it almost like dyes the fabric that color I think like the pigment sinks into the fabric or something yeah so we're just kind of removing the wax and leaving the color that's that's how it sounds oh you were short segments oh <laughs> well if you love it then that's perfect I mean I love I, I sometimes I like when weird stuff like that happens. I mean, you know, it sucks if you don't know why, but it's fun from the sense of, you know, how you make it up, like you put extra little squares in. Those are sometimes like gonna be, you know, those could be your favorite squares in the whole quilt and you wouldn't have had them without without the mistake. So I, I like that stuff. All right, throwing up uh, the next, let's go this way again. Next segment. This is for the second row 12. So I think uh, we'll definitely get these sewn on tonight, I think. We're cruising along. Okay. So here is our row, uh, our first 12 row. So we have we have the blue on either end. Yep, check, so that should be good. Throwing it on my pile, and now let's finish up our last book. Uh, I'm not, I don't think it had, um, Gretchen, maybe that book had coloring. I think it was mostly applique. I think it was applique and, and, um, and embroidery. I'm not sure it had, had much coloring in, but now that you mentioned it, I'm not positive. I'm gonna have to go back and look because I love that book and that'd be cool if, if it did, then we could check it out again. Any reason to look through that, uh, that pretty book. One more segment and then we start combining them again. It might. I'll have to check, Gretchen. I am not sure. All right, let's snip these fillers. All right, open them up. It'll be kind of fun to press these because I think we press them in all one direction. So that'll be, that'll be easy. Okay, I think that's lined up. Let me see, what does it say about seam allowances? Press seam allowances towards the pink. In our case, that is blue. All right, easy peasy. Ooh, I can't unfold it. There we go. Yeah. 
So I'm going to snip off this guy here. And we'll sew these two together. Oh, and then we need that extra blue one again. Because they get that, this one gets that extra blue on the side, on the end. Snip these. Oh, I'm excited to get this on the quilt. Ooh, we're gonna be in big bulky land again then, but oh well. So be it. All right, now I'm gonna get that extra blue piece. Here we go. So we'll throw it on this end. And then we will need an actual ender or a leader this time, since we don't have any more things to sew. Oh yeah, sewing the scant quarter inch, you know, I'm still struggling with that as well. It, it, it's not the easiest thing in the world, even though it seems like it, it should be, but it really, sometimes like in the case of little checkered board, things like this, sometimes it just needs to be, it needs to be more accurate. So yeah, it, it just takes practice. I mean, look, I have all these, tools to I have this tape down to help me get the scant quarter and I really am thinking about it every single time I so and I I um, used to kind of veer off the side and I still do sometimes so I struggle with that as well but yeah that scant quarter can sometimes be a little tricky but yeah there's a lot of good tricks out there to test it um, so definitely uh, Google Google that and uh, you'll find some good testings. A lot of times it's sewing something like this and then measuring it and then adjusting until it's like the perfect three or six inches or something. All right, we have that. We are done. Let's, let's head over to the ironing board. We'll shush over here. Okay, let's get these guys pressed. So we're gonna press towards the towards the blue oh towards the blue so we have to press them all in like this i guess let me just double check um press seam allowances towards the pink so i was thinking i could just go straight down all these but i can't they they all have to go towards the pink so well, and pink is blue in my case so we'll just we'll just go little by little let's I think straighten out would be easier. So, sorry, you guys can't really see there. We'll go that way and then that way. So we can kind of go in the white area and do one side and then the other side. We'll hit it from the front too yet. All right, so in the white, one side and the other. So we kind of batched our process this time because we we did all the sewing together and now we're going to do the, all the ironing together. That's sometimes a good way to do it. Or if you don't think you can stand ironing for this amount of time, then then trade it off. Do the do the uh, sew one and then press one and then sew one and press one. I opted for all at once this time. Mostly because I wanted to sew it all at once, not because I wanted to press it all at once. Oops, that one, that one didn't get pressed. All right. First one's almost done. 
Man, again, I'm forgetting that pressing takes so long, so maybe we won't get the borders done, these borders done today. Maybe we'll just get, get maybe two sewn on. I'm just scooching over here. All right, I'm just going to hit it all from the front as well. And then I'll throw these over my, my chair just so I don't crinkle them all up. They're looking awfully pretty though. I think by having all this blue in it, I think it'll really maybe get my overall quilt to feel like that same blue of this fabric, and, and I'm hoping so, because I want, I want the theme to still uh, be around that fabric. All right, I'm going to get the other one with the white on the end. I think those two are going to be done first, because they're shorter, so these will be the the um, the two first sides that we do. So again, I'm just kind of going in the white and pushing it both ways. Kind of pulling just a hair on either side when I do it, just so the seam is nice and flat. Not stretching it, but a little bit. Hopefully we can get at least one of these sewn on tonight so we can get a get the hang of it a little bit. Oops. I'm losing stuff. I'm still trying to feel, uh, remember I, I talked about that some of my words that I want for next year are like consistency and patience. I think, uh, I think these quilt projects and I think like pressing and stuff like this, I think that's a good, it's a good test of that. Just consistency and patience. Just you know, work on it little by little and, and eventually it gets done. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, that is the second one. So we have two more yet to do, except unless we, we could cheat actually. Let's see, maybe we wanna to cheat tonight. Um, we could sew those two sides on and then come back and press these. You know what? I think I might do that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just don't know if I want to press all these at once. I, I really want to sew. So I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to head back down here. I'm going to I'm going to get rid of these for now because they're going to be in my way a little bit and let's get this guy back out. So the two that we've pressed already, those go on the sides of this. So we could do our little wonder clip thing again. All right, got to unfold this guy. All right, so here's here's our first house. So we could go along this edge here. I think what I'm going to do is let's fold it in half again. I'm going to 
put you guys at an angle here so you can see what I'm doing. You still have to iron your checks before putting them on tomorrow. Yep, that's uh that's uh, I'm I'm skipping the iron. I'm not gonna skip the ironing on the other one, but I'm too anxious to to sew something onto here tonight. So we're gonna just do we're gonna sew the side seams and then maybe we'll sew the top and bottom seams and press them tomorrow. We'll see. But all right, I'm just kind of folding it in half here. Just key scratching it together to make sure it's all good. And there, I'm gonna just mark, I'm just going to put a little crease right here at the center. So I know that that's my center point. There we go, see? And now I'm gonna do the same thing for one of my strips here. So whatever, it'll be the center. Okay, so it's this blue one. All right, I'm going to just give that a little crease too. All right, and that will be our first our first wonder clip. So let me scoot you guys down. We're gonna just wonder clip this whole this whole thing, just like how we did that white border. So I'm I'm matching those two center points with right sides together. Let's get these guys up here. All right, that's our first clip. Now we're gonna go to the end to match the ends. Or you just marry the end square seams. Oh, that, that would work too. I just, I like knowing what the center is just cause then I can balance out the two big long pieces in the middle. So, all right, matched up the end. Whoop. Flung that guy across the room. All right, and then now we'll kind of, uh, we'll basically center from my middle point here and the end. I'm just kind of laying everything as flat as I can. We'll throw another one in the general center of those two, and then we'll have it again here. And we'll see how we do on how accurate this is. Already, I'm kind of having a little bit of a hunch that my scant quarter inch is a hair too scant. So this should be a little interesting, <laughs> which means my, that my strip, my whole strip is, is going to be bigger than it should be. But we'll do it. We'll, we'll use it anyway. We'll see how it goes. All right. So just doing this one. Oh, you're just now sewing the blocks together. Yeah, it gets big so quickly. Yeah, with these, uh, I mean, the blocks were 13 inch, or not 13, were 18 inches. So those are pretty large. But yeah, it gets so bulky. At, I always have a hard time when it kind of gets to this stage when you're dealing with a whole big quilt. That's why I'm a little nervous for the Charming Chevrons quilt because we're gonna be, I mean, I'm gonna be moving a whole quilt all over the place here in, in this small little space. But it's a test, right? We'll see how, we'll see how we do. All right, I need another one here and then we will, we'll sew this together. But yeah, I think I'm a little, Maybe a little hair too scant on my my quarter inches. Oh, put the longer part on the bottom and the feed dogs will ease the extra fabric in. Okay, Valerie, let's give that a let's give that a try. So I will flip this over to sew. Get these guys down here. All right, so like this. All right, we're gonna give it a go. Actually, I gotta flip this whole guy over. Let's get situated a little bit better here. Fold this over, get this nice and flat. All right, I think we're ready.
Works every time. Okay, that's what I like to hear. Sure, I see. I could have maybe put some more wonder clips in here too, because they're wanting to pop apart already. Yep. Gotta get this guy over here on the table. All right, let's get her going. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of hold it in between the the uh, the wonder clips. I think that'll help ease the hair too. All right, wonder clip one. Now the clips are upside down, so it's a little goofy, but we're gonna be okay. I just wanna make sure that I'm still lined up with the edge. I gotta move this side of the fabric too. All this heavy bulk. Not used to doing stuff with this hand. It's playing an active role now. Moving the other half of the fabric along. Other half of the quilt. The bulk, we're moving the bulk with it. Yeah, I definitely think this is working. I'm not having not having any trouble so far in between the wonder clips. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna use that trick again for sure. Putting a larger piece um, near the feed dogs. I think that was the halfway point there. It's the dealing with the bulk. <laughs> it's dealing with everything to the left of the, the sewing machine that's being annoying. Oh gosh, this would have been the worst though if, uh, if the bobbin went out now. So I'm happy if it had to go out, it, it went out when, when it did yesterday. All right, we are almost to the end. Just two more wonder clips. <laughs> I'm doing it with no pins. Well, the wonder clips are definitely my friend this time. Okay, and we are, that's, uh, we're like to the end here now. And here's the last, last bit. Well, I think that worked. I don't, I didn't have any problems uh, with, with uh, that top being too long. So let's, let's flip it around. I wanna check it out. All right, let's, let's scooch over here to see. Oh my gosh, there's just so much quilt everywhere. Ah, there they are, the floating little squares. So, okay, that was way more satisfying then, than pressing another one. Here, let's go up like this and I'll show you. There, so here is that border. Yay. All right, let's get the other one on. That worked great. I think it's, um, I mean, you know, maybe it's a little, maybe it's a little bunchy here and there, but I, 
I'm not sure it's anything all that bad. I mean, you see, you can kind of see it bunch, but I think once we press that, I think that's gonna go away. Um, but that does mean that my, my scant quarter inch, I'm doing it a little too scant. So I need to go closer to a quarter inch, I think. So I need to know that next time. I think this will balance out because we're gonna be putting a one long solid on the other side of this as well. So I don't think we're gonna have an issue. It'll just be scrunchy on both sides. So it's not gonna be an issue. It's not like we're gonna keep on putting it on which will make it um, like rounder and rounder. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I'm totally nervous for this chevrons, but I think it'll be fun. It's, it'll be, it'll be a crazy situation over here, I think. All right, first off, let's do the same deal. Let's uh, fold this in half. I don't think I'm gonna do any borders for the chevron quilt though, so I won't have to deal with all this putting it in half or anything like that. All right. Just trying to match it up so it's as accurate as I can get it. All right, and there's our little center. So let's just crease that. And here is my other border. Great, so then tomorrow we will press the top and bottom pieces. I think it's this blue in the center, yeah. We'll press the top and bottom rows and sew them on like what we're doing. That's more satisfying. Then we get something on the quilt tonight at least. I like it. All right, um, center area. Oh, I didn't unfold it yet. Okay, right there. Yeah, I guess that's the center. Grab some clips, oops. Flinging clips everywhere today. Oh, let me, um, I'll turn the clips the other direction though because I'm gonna be putting this on the bottom again. I have clips everywhere. I'll have to clean them all up tonight. All right, getting the one end. And now let's run that along the edge and put the center in there. Oh yeah, this one's bulkier it seems. Ah well, it's how it goes. Let's throw one here. I might have to use a few more wonder clips maybe. Eh, or not. But yeah. Got to work on my scant quarter inches yet, too. I will uh, have to remember a hair less scant. I'm going to put a couple, couple in here. It's hard to get right with these things, I think. All right, I'm going to get the bottom of it here. Oh, yeah, I'll have long rows to put together. But the long rows, they'll all be the same. So whether I'm scant or not, um, they'll all be pretty much the same, I think. I think we'll do fine. And besides, I'm learning I'm learning on this one that I'm a little too scant, so I won't I won't be on that one maybe. <laughs> Just real quarter inches, no scants next time. Maybe, I mean, you know, I'm going by like previous measurements. Um, maybe I should be looking at my uh, presser foot or something, using that as my guide, I don't know. 
We'll have to do all the, the tests or something, maybe. All right, I'm going to get one more wonder clip in here. And we'll flip it around. And so this goes on the bottom with the feed dogs. I like that tip a lot. That's, that's fabulous. So um, we'll do that. Flipping it around. Okay. Yay, we're going to get two borders on tonight. And they are pretty. I'm excited for them. Okay, here we go. Make sure we're matched up still. I think we are. They're the same color, so it's acting up a little weird. There we go. Yeah, maybe a hair too scant. Ah, <sighs> bothers me. Metal to the <laughs> pedal. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to sew too quickly because then my whole uh, whole uh, tripod and camera and everything shakes but I am I am kind of readdressing this scant quarter inch in my head a little bit now as I look at this so wow this feed dog trick is really working though this is it's working really well it's going right through all right I have to tame this bulk though So yeah, so we just have the other checkerboard border and we'll press and sew both of those on. And then we have the long border, which I think I need to assemble pieces for that because I think I have a, a bunch of short pieces. So we have that skinny border and then there's the two fat borders and that's it. Yeah, at least I had the correct measurements of fabric segments. That's true, Gretchen. Oh, man. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Oh, I think I might be pushing all my fabric on the ground and my cutting board. Yeah, I think when we do the chevron quilt, I'm going to have to... Anything I'm not using, like the ironing board or the cutting board, all that's just going to have to go on the floor or something. Because right now they're still all on the table and I don't got the space for that. Exactly, Gretchen. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's going to be a good lap size quilt. I don't think it's quite a twin size or anything like that, this, this quilt, but it's, um, you know, it's a hefty size lap quilt for sure. I think you'll be able to get your whole body underneath it for a nap. Sounds uh, like that's the perfect size. <laughs> We're almost done though. Only two more clips. Okay, that one is on as well. And man, I'm telling you, I like that feed dog trick. That really helped uh, ease and gather these all along because um, I think that was a little bit longer. Uh, Patricia, I'm not sure. Well, I, I mean, we have so many, I have so many little lap quilts because I love, I just love that size of blanket. But you know, you always, you always can use another 
quilt, I think. All right, here's the uh, the two for tomorrow. I want to press this tonight yet, though, because then it'll be ready to sew the other two on tomorrow, because uh, this should be pressed before we sew the other side on. So let's see. Um, press the seam allowance towards the piece borders. Okay. Towards the piece borders. So let's get that down here. And then tomorrow we'll... We'll, we'll do the same stuff we did today, basically. We'll press those borders and sew them on. Oh man, I'm telling you, I need that cordless iron. Or one of those irons, you know, like in, uh, oops, geez, I put a huge crease in this, dang it. Um, those irons that they have the uh, cord going to the ceiling, like in a, in a factory or something. That's what I need. Cords just going above me, not in my way down here. Oops. All right, last little bit here. All right, let's check it out. I'm gonna flip around. All right, that looks a little bit better. I just want to, I won't press the whole thing. I don't think I just kind of want to give it a look with it pressed. Yeah, I mean, I think once we get that other border on, I mean, I can tell that it's a little bit bigger. I can tell that it's stretching here. It's, it's like, you know, winging out a little bit like that. Uh, but once we get that other side on, it'll all scrunch together the same. And yeah, I, I don't think we're going to have any problem at all. So I'm happy with it. Let's press that other side. Oh, you have a cordless and love it? Oh man. Oh, thanks, Glennis. Uh, I might have to look into one of those. A little, little bitty cordless one. Because what a pain. Especially with these big quilts, you know? I mean, it's annoying enough to uh, try and find a place to to set it. Oh, I think we're going to do it this way. I should have done it this way for the last, for the other side. Then we're pressing the front too. Yeah, definitely bowing a little bit there. But we're learning. Too scant. I just got to remember I'm too scant. I'm always paranoid of um, it being too much, like that I'm at the quarter inch and then I won't have enough. I won't have enough fabric. So I suppose this is the better option of the two, maybe. Oh, the extra fullness can be worked in when quilting. Oh, that, that's good. That's what I'm hoping for. And and actually, I don't think it's going to be all that noticeable. I just know it. It's there, you know, from the whole scant quarter inch thing. And uh, But yeah, I think it's actually not going to be much of an issue at all, which I'm pretty happy about. But yeah, it's just more of a mental note like, hey, you're you're not all that scant. You need to or you need to be a little less scant. OK, but that is it. So uh, here we go. We, we're, it's coming together here. So I think we'll, we'll stop there tonight, but I want to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to flip you guys around and uh, we will check this out. Alrighty. Hello, I'm standing up here ready for you guys. So let's just grab in this. So, all right, so we didn't, we didn't do the top yet, but here we go, the little, uh, there's the floating little 
bits there. So I can't even, I can't even show it all to you guys anymore. There, this is about as far back as I can go. <laughs> but there we go. I will uh, take a photo of it and then we'll be able to see, see the rest of it. But uh, little by little, we're getting these on. <laughs> oh yeah, I need a wide angle. I actually have a wide angle lens on it already. So, so yeah, I don't know. With, with this off, then you'd see even less. <laughs> Well, all right, guys, I'll take a photo of that and I'll get it uh, up on the uh, like the YouTube graphics so you guys can see it. And uh, we're cranking away. So tomorrow we'll do the top and bottom border. And yeah, then we are on. Oh, you know what? I, we do have a white border to go around it yet. I was thinking we were done with the borders, but I think I think there is another white border. So eh, we'll do that next, I suppose. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks again. Uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and it will stay here on Penguin and Fish on Facebook. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you subscribe so you can uh, watch again. And uh, we are on at every, every night at 8.30 p.m. Central, just as a reminder. So thanks again, guys, and I will check you out tomorrow. Good night.